Oklahoma City, 1932. Come by tomorrow? Well, let's make it late on tonight. I'm gonna head out of here. All right. Hey, where are you heading? You got a spot picked out already? No, not yet. Got a little gal picked out I'm gonna check up on, though. Now, what you need with a gal? <laughs> well, when you get a little older, I'll see if I can't draw you a picture. Oh, I already got the picture, guy. A long time ago. Did you? <laughs> well, you ought to see this one, boy. A blonde. Oh, yeah? Yep, a real blonde. Right down to the toes. Or maybe you know her. She comes from Austin. Bonnie Parker. Bonnie Parker? Say, ain't that Duke Jefferson's wife? That's right. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I gotta go pick up my stuff. Hey, you're in for a parcel of trouble, boy. That Bonnie Parker's a real wildcat. The wildcats don't worry me none. I kinda like the way they scratch when they get excited. <laughs> so sick of these joints. Hey, Bonnie, you're a pretty girl. Why don't you latch on to some guy, let him do the work? I already latched on. <laughs> Duke Jefferson, I heard about him. Who hasn't? So the only kind of job I can get is in a dive like this. You gonna wait for the Duke to get out? 175 years? No kid. 175 years. It's gonna be some wait. What a jerk. All I ever met were punks. Come from no place. <sighs> Go nowhere. You shouldn't have trouble getting any man. To do what? As soon as they hear about Duke, they think I'm a bum just like him. It's funny. He never wanted to go out at night to a movie or dancing. Couldn't figure it. Till I found out every cop in the state was looking for him. <laughs> You're the one person in Oklahoma who didn't know who he was. Yeah. I made one rotten mistake and I'm through for good. They don't want to give you a chance to get out of something you didn't even know you were getting into. is on the menu, Buster. <laughs> okay, baby. I think I'll take a little bacon and a couple of eggs. Fry one on one side and one on the other. Mm. Any way you look at it, honey, you're hot stuff. Mm. You, uh, like hot stuff? Yeah. Well, try this! Now, maybe I'm just a little bit too hot for you to handle. Uh -huh. 
He didn't think he was going to scare me off with a little hot grease. How about a little hot lead? Oh, you're a pretty tough cookie. Would you like another demonstration? Now listen to me, bum. If you ever touch me again, I'm going to blow you wide open. You're making a little mistake, Bonnie. I already made a little mistake, pal. The next one I make is going to be real big. I'm not going for any two-bit mug. You look ahead. Like a two bit mug? Get it. Now, as soon as it's cleared, you get out of here. You listen to me, Bonnie. You lost your job tonight. You're down your last dime, ain't you? Honey, with your connections, you can't even get a job in a dance hall. Like just a good nose, Bonnie. Let me in. I can listen to it right here. Suppose I was to tell you you could have your job back. Do I get it? The landlady doesn't go for men in the rooms. Now, what about the job? <laughs> it's no problem. I told the boss you flared up a little bit, but you were an okay kid. And I could handle you. Let's go inside and talk it over. I told you. Bonnie, let's conduct business in a friendly way. And what does that mean? It means if you want to do business, we're going to be friends. You're not the kind of friend I'm going to do business with. <laughs> I don't think you understand. Perfectly. Now get lost. You think about it, honey. Duke Jefferson's a well-known boy. Any town you hit, the punks will be right there to say hello. You gotta have somebody to take care of you, kid. I'm offering you a nice business-like arrangement. When I make a business-like arrangement, it's going to be with someone who's operating a very big business. <laughs> You team up with me and we'll just take what we want. Well, you know as well as I do. You're just gonna wind up on a street corner. And you won't be selling newspapers. You and me, 50-50. Cause, honey, I am going places. In a very big way. Shut the door. Wichita Falls, Texas, December 15, 1932. Oh, you really dance smooth, baby. Who's dancing? Ooh. How'd you do? Pretty good day. Wait till it's legal. <laughs> hey, I'm closing up. Can't make any money with you two. Oh, how right you are, mister. John, if I do say so myself, stuff ain't bad. See ya. Okay. Y'all come back again. Don't worry. You will. Hey, John, while I'm here, do you want a couple more barrels? No, I'm loaded. 
You can stop in on the way back if you want. Okay. You forget something? Yeah, the money. Where do you keep the good stuff? Hey, that stuff costs a lot of dough. Here, we're not cheapskates. Keep the change. Let him have it! <laughs> hey, plot this for me, will you? Okay. Da da dee. Da da dee dee dee. Dee 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 dee. Come on here, baby. Mm. Da 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 dee dee dee. Hey. Da -da -dee -dee -dee. That's not bad. <laughs> you take care of the driver, guy, and I'll take care of you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Mm. Mm. Dee dee dee. Yes, sir, what would it be? Fill her up. Yes, sir. Mm. We're gonna ride a long way together, baby. We ain't stopping for anything. I don't mind stopping. Once in a while. <laughs> That'll be two fifty eight. Shall I check the oil? Why not? Yes. you got? Look, mister, you can have anything you want. Well, we ain't greedy. We'll just take your money. Come on, get inside. Come on, here! Here, baby. Banged out the floorboards. Well, come on, come on. He's 
still right behind us. Now, we're not gonna lose this boy. Oh, yes, we are. Pull over there. Just where do you two think you're going? Wherever it is, you're not invited! <laughs> Like I said. Okay, put a light on him. Wanted for murder in Waco, Alvarado, Denison, and Wichita Falls, Texas, and McAllister, Oklahoma, Bonnie Parker, and Guy Darrow. Kansas State Police would like you to call them back at 4 o'clock, sir. All right, remind me. Hmm. Mary, why do you figure a woman would go on a rampage like this? Probably a man. Sugar and spice and everything nice. This one's a real shocker. Seems like nobody can stop her. Honey, I've been a ranger for 22 years. I never saw anybody that couldn't be stopped, man or woman. We'd grab them if they'd stick in Texas. Well, these kids jumping state lines wouldn't mean a thing if we had somebody jumping right behind them. What we ought to do is to put one man on the case. Let him stick to it like chewing gum. Somebody that wouldn't stop day or night until he grabbed him. Yeah. Well, don't look at me. Just happens I am looking at you. I don't know why these kids don't figure it. Sooner or later, everybody with a gun winds up behind the eight ball. Tom, I want you to get them. And in a hurry. All right. I make no promises about the hurry, but I'll get them. Neosho, Missouri, May 6th. 1933. Bonnie! Hey, Bonnie! Hey, didn't you hear me? Water stinks. <laughs> Ow, can't you see I'm soaking wet? Yeah, I can see. Guy, I'm sick of this farmhouse living. Oh. Well, come on here, baby. Leave me alone, Guy. I'm going in the house. Bonnie, what in the world's the matter with you? I'm not in the mood. For what? To be pestered. Oh, is that what you call it? Yes, that's what I call it. We're living like a couple of animals. Oh, this dump is getting on my nerves. 
Oh, you want a big hotel room down in Dallas? Yeah, that's what I want. Well, maybe you'd like the sheriff for a roommate, too. Big man, big ideas. You're a two-bit operator just like the rest of them. Oh, I suppose you'd like to go riding down Main Street on tight shoe night. <laughs> just sitting there yelling, hooray, here I am. Not me. Got plenty of money to take it easy for another year yet. <laughs> you want diamonds around your neck? Well, you're gonna end up with a rope. You were gonna show me the big time. Remember? You were going places. Pigsty. You think you can just sit on your rear and play it safe? Don't you think someone's gonna start wondering who we are and why you never go to work? And don't worry about sharing a hotel room with the sheriff. Because he'll be moving in right here. Yeah? Where do you think he'd be? Your big shot brother. Here, Chuck. Yeah. I sure didn't take you long to get up here. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. Where is it? It's near your place. Listen. We better not talk this way over the phone. How's about me and the gal then coming on out? Well, okay, I'll keep an eye out for you. Yeah. All right, I'll see you. Let's go. You broke down and bought me a glass of beer. Will you let me finish it? Well, come on, hurry up. Will you sit down? You're making me nervous. Well, what did God have to say? told me to tell my idiot girlfriend to keep a big mouth shut. Oh, you think you're so smart. No, I don't, baby, because if I was, I would have gotten rid of you a long time ago. Now, come on, let's go. <laughs> what do we owe you, bartender? Two bets. All righty. Thank you. You're welcome. in that car spender. Well, aren't you gonna do anything about it? Sure. We'll find the county sheriff and report the accident. What did Chuck want? Oh, he's got some fool idea for a job. What's so fool about it? We don't need it. We got dough. Yeah. And all the hominy grits we can eat. I ain't aiming to get stopped by any county sheriff now. You haven't even heard what the job is yet. Well, I don't care what it is. I just ain't interested. Well, I am. We've been doing what you want, and now we're going to start doing what I want. We're going to go out and get some kicks. Some real kicks. In big city style. Guy, if uh, you get stopped by some county sheriff, that's your problem. Because nobody's stopping me. You drive like an old poke. Step on it. Sure. While we're at it, we'll, we'll hang a big banner out the back of the car. Chuck and his gal on the way to meet Guy and Bonnie. Come one, come all. I appreciate your moving so fast after I phoned you, Sheriff. 
Moving fast is our business. You think we'll catch up with him, sir? I called Dave Hilder and told him to keep an eye out. Well, supposing they turn off before they get to Dave's place? We'll just have to wait and see. Say, that Chuck would sure die if he knew his friend he bashed in, wouldn't he? <laughs> he will if we get him. Say, Mr. Steele, that was really something you spotting him right there in that bar. Yeah, just lucky, I guess. Well, sir, to tell you the truth, Mr. Steele, I don't know why you people down in Texas ever let that Chuck out on parole. Say, you don't think that uh, he'd be hooking up with uh, Bonnie and Guy, do you? If I didn't, he wouldn't be out on parole. Hey, you know what I got a yen for? Whatever it is, it costs money. A great big Kansas City steak. Blood rare and smothered in fried onions and French fried potatoes. Maybe a green salad on the side. And a great big bottle of good booze sitting right there on the table. For me. You ever try a hamburger and coke? Hey, Chuck boy, how are you? It's so good oh, to see you. You look like a million dollars. Hey, hey boy, look at that. Where's Bonnie? Where's Bonnie? Wonderful. Where's your son? Where's Bonnie? Oh, Bonnie's on the kitchen. She'll be here in a minute. Yeah, up ahead there. That's Dave Hilder. See him? Sure did. I got a man trailing him in a pickup. How long ago did they pass? Not long, about five minutes. How fast are they moving? About 40. We got some more deputies on the way. Get in. Do you know that big crossroads this side of Joplin? Uh, roadhouse there, old sprawling place? Uh-uh. This is about five miles the other side. There's a filling station. And there's a feed store there. Oh, yeah, I know it. Uh, it's got a sign there with a big old cow painted on it. That's it. That's the one. Now, Saturday afternoons, this place is just jammed with everybody loading up on feed and paying off their bill. Oh, wait a minute. How many guys are around? Well, let me finish here. Now, it usually closes about supper time. Now, there ain't nobody around but an old man that runs the place. And he don't close Saturdays till about 8 o'clock. Now, I figure 6, maybe 7, we can walk in and out of there without even waking up the cat. Well, how much? Well, this may surprise you guys for a feed store, but I'll make you a bet we could hit for a couple of thousand with no trouble at all. What do you think? I don't know, boy. Guy, the beauty of the whole thing is there ain't nobody between here and there to stop us. If you don't need me anymore, I might just as well get out of your way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. We better get as close as we can before we start anything. Frank, you want to try making it over behind Chuck's car? Sure. We'll see what happens. If I get there, what's next? We'll get everybody up as close as we can. Uh -huh. Then we'll throw tear gas at them through the window. See what happens. If they start up, so will we. So watch your step. Who are you? Dave, we sure do appreciate your sticking your neck out like this. But I mean, you ain't no deputy, but thanks. I just as soon stay with you. Okay, boy. Watch your step. This is gonna be some party. Well, do we go or not? I'm all set. It's up to Guy. Guy? Oh, I don't know. Have to admit, it don't sound so bad, but still, if I'm... Holy cow, there's somebody out there holding national guard maneuvers in the front yard.
Wait till the rooster comes out. Guy will think he saw an army tank. I'm telling you, there's some guys out there. Well, you think I'm blind? Chuck, I mean it. Somebody followed you out here, boy. What's wrong with you, boy? There ain't nobody followed us. <laughs> I'm telling you, idiots, we're in for a surprise. <laughs> Stay away from the window. Can't see anything. How are you? Shut up. Well, we gotta get out of here. Let's turn it back way. Bonnie Parker, the blonde Tommy Gun girl and her partner in crime, Guy Darrow, continue to terrorize the central and southwestern states. In Fort Smith, Arkansas, Sheriff Harry Carter died after a violent battle with a trigger-happy pair. And this morning, in St. Joseph, Missouri, they engaged in a wild chase after wounding three police officers. Throughout the Midwest, highways and back roads are swarming with heavily armed state police and sheriff's deputies. All right, they're in St. Joe this morning. Now, let's see. Right there. St. Joe. Buddy, you've been hanging around me so long, you're getting real smart. <laughs> we got every crossroads in the state covered. If they're in Missouri, we'll get them. Well, that's just the problem. They're not going to be hanging around here long. Not with all your cousins out looking for them. Mm. It's too hot for them down Oklahoma and Arkansas. They're too smart to head south. You think they'll go north? Wouldn't be surprised. In that case, they're not so smart after all. Because that's just where we're going to be, north. Plastered their picture in every filling station from here to Canada. But what if they just hole up and don't buy gas? Well, if that's the way you want it, let's see them stop eating. And every old guy that sells a can of beans is gonna know what they look like. Now, if they are heading north, right about now, they should be crossing the Iowa State Line. Casey, Iowa, June 28, 1933. Nobody died. This isn't a funeral. Not yet. Why don't we talk about something nice? Like a hanging? Uh, so we're hot, so they're on our trail. We've been hot before, they've been on our trail before. We're just free and easy. Guy, we might as well face the facts. We can't even stop at a water trough without stirring up a posse. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys something and you listen to me. Sure, we're hot. Because we've been going at this like a bunch of grammar school kids. I wish I had a nickel for every filling station we knocked over. We got peanuts. General stores, freight offices. We'll be going after kids' piggy banks pretty soon. We hit a million penny ante joints and we got the whole country after us. Just as easy to make a couple of big hauls and take off for good. And that's what we're gonna do. From now on, we're not hitting any filling stations when there's a bank across the street. Well, that's okay by me, Bonnie, but we gotta get a couple of more hands to knock over a bank. Put an ad in the paper. Wanted young men to go into business and share in the profits. 
Well, they bring your own Tommy gun. Hot dog, the way things are these days, I bet we get a lot of answers, too. <laughs> We're not breaking in any new talent. We're gonna get guys with experience. Most of them good boys are in stir. That's right, old Chucky. And we're gonna get them out. Who you got in mind? Duke Jefferson, my husband. Thought she's all through with Duke. I was. But we need him, and we're gonna get him. Well, I might have a little something to say on that subject. Go ahead. I'm listening. Who do you think's running this outfit? Guy. I know who's running it. From now on, I am. You know, Bonnie, when you get Duke out, you're gonna have your hands full trying to take care of him and Guy, too. They're gonna have to take care of themselves. We work together on the jobs, and that's as far as it goes. They can both take it or leave it. Well, Guy may take it, but Duke won't. He will. It's in the deal. Or he stays right where he is. And we're gonna be taking some chances trying to spring him. It's a little late to be worrying about taking chances. Well, what do you mean? We don't have to. What are we gonna do? Buy ourselves a little general store and retire? <sighs> we got ourselves a one-way ticket. There's nothing you can do once you get on, but ride right to the end of the line. We're full of knot in a minute. You better give Chuck a hand. How you planning on getting in touch with Duke? I haven't figured it out yet. Mm -hmm. Well, when you do, if you don't mind, you let me in on it. I might, and I might not. Yes, we will. Hey, you the big boss. What do we do now? Give me your jacket. Oh, I need it. You won't need it if you don't give it to me.
soon as the heat's off, we're gonna spring Duke Jefferson. Clemens State Prison, Brazoria, Texas, April 1934. Hi, Duke. Glad you could make it. Okay, spill it. Pack your toothbrush and your teddy bear. You're going bye-bye. What do I do? That's the tide. It's figured for next Tuesday. Watch it. So I said to him that I'd be coming down here to see you, and he said to pass along his regards. He's feeling much better now. Okay. When you come out in the morning, make your way over to the brush pile near the road. There'll be a white cloth at the bottom. The guns will be there. Good. Let's see if I remember how to use one. The prison gate's right down the road. Well, then we'll have to come back. Oh, no, he won't. Well, what would you suggest? I'll get rid of him. How are you gonna do that without waking up the whole countryside? Just watch me. Where are you going? When you see those two guys leave, you wait a while. And then you pull up and dump the stuff and take off. I'll meet you on down the road. Y you got a gun? I got everything I'll need. Over in the south pasture, we had a little irrigating over there. Oh, Pretty yeah? Pretty dry, yeah. Hey, get a load of that. Not bad, not bad at all. Hello, fellas. <laughs> what are you doing out here all by yourself? Oh, I got bored, went out for a walk. <laughs> you never know what might happen to a pretty girl on a dark night, though. Well, I'm uh, new around here. Maybe I need someone to take care of me. Boy, we'll be glad to take that job, won't we? Got another cigarette? Sure enough, sure enough. Here you go. What's your name? I'm Marvis. Here's my cousin Alvin. How you doing? Hi. I'm Sue. What do you do for excitement around here? Well, it's pretty quiet around here most of the time. Nothing much to do except take walks, huh? That's about it. Well, uh, since you're so afraid of me being out alone, uh, why don't you join me, huh? Fine, right, let's go. Hey, where you been? I said, where you been? I wanted to make sure you had plenty of time. Did you dump the stuff? Yeah, I dumped it. Now, what took you so long? You take care of your end. I'll take care of mine.
dodging police traps, the Bonnie Parker gang flamed back on the scene with a daring holdup of the Texas National Bank. And at Denton, Texas, two patrolmen were killed when they approached a parked car. A third patrolman identified the car's driver as Bonnie Parker. And that's the latest news. Now back to the program in progress. You never made this knocking over candy stores. I'm going to bed. I think it's about time we had a little talk. Talk? Bonnie is my wife. That's your problem. Well, let's make sure you don't have any ideas about solving any of my problems. I was away for 175 years, you thought, okay. But now, I'm back. You'd be my guest. The show is over. Out. I want in, Bonnie. I said get out. I'm still your husband. Till death do us part.
I, I was just going for a cigarette. The next time you go after something, don't try it barefoot. All right, wise guys. See for yourself. Funny. If I didn't know you better, I'd say you were Jesse James in disguise. Well, what are they doing on a backwoods road like this? I wish I'd bet you on it. I'd love to take your money. Hey, guy, you keep your nose clean. Looks like you're gonna have quite a bundle. I just wonder why they're using this road. They're taking a detour where the highway's being repaired. This is sweet. It's like a million miles from nowhere. And no cops around to get in the way. Well, what do you figure they're good for? Plenty. They're picking up from five banks. Boys, in a few days, we're gonna have to kidnap ourselves a bookkeeper. Yes? Paul Baxter, I live next door. What do you want? Well, could I use your phone? Mine's out of order. Just a minute. I um, had to straighten up. Well, you didn't have to go to all that trouble. <laughs> it's just as well. I hope I'm not bothering you. There's the phone. Four six four, please. Hello, Hank. Yeah, yeah. Gee, I'm sorry to hear you're not feeling so hot. Well, I thought I'd call and give you the chapters to study tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, it's first part of 71 and all of 73. Yeah. No, he's going to skip all the rest. Right, right. All right, now look, take care of yourself, huh? And I'll see you then. All right, bye. Thanks. Don't tell me you're a school teacher. No, I go to night school. Night school? Yeah, I'm studying to be an architect. Oh, you put up buildings and all that, huh? Well, I, I don't exactly put them up, but I design them. Well, I decide how the building's gonna look. But they all look alike. Oh, no. Come here, let me show you. <clears throat> that is, if your husband doesn't throw me out. What husband? Well, I thought that, that one of those fellows that lived here was your husband. They're my brothers. They went into town. Well, how do you like that? It's your brothers. We ought to get to know each other. Paul, tell me. What's it all add up to? You get home from night school at 11 o'clock. You work all day, and you don't have a nickel to your name. What's the percentage? Sue, I want to build something. I want to be a part of something that's, that's worthwhile, something I can see growing. To me, being an architect is just that. What more perfect way is it than to, to sit down with a blank piece of paper, and wind up with a 10-story building? I guess you think I'm crazy, huh? No, I... No, I don't. I... Well, what I mean is I... 
Wish I could do something like that. You can, Sue. <laughs> Me put up a billy. You're the end. <laughs> Look, a woman has kids, doesn't she? You know, that's really something. I never knew anyone like you before. You do now. So what's the problem, huh? What you looking for, guy? A move over. A move you like, will you, Barney? What are you looking for? I can't find the car keys. What are you talking about? The car keys. I had them right here. Just put the guns in the back. Oh, come on, get out, will you? to the car. We gotta get going. Okay, I guess you're all right. Thanks, pal. Watch your step. Don't worry, we will. We should take that boy with us. We could use him. Come on, come on. Cover up that fresh dirt. Who knows? If the armored car don't go for it, maybe we catch ourselves a hippopotamus. <laughs> you figure they'll get out of the car when the front end goes in? Why not? If they go into a hole in a road like this? Well, we'll be all right if they both get out. We'll be all right if one gets out. That might take a little time. Who's gonna rush us? Well, what if they get some help? What are they gonna do? Send up smoke signals? I'm not kidding you. I'll bet we played poker till 6 o'clock in the morning. I couldn't do anything but win. How much? Came out 35 bucks a head. I'm telling you, I'm on the lucky streak, boy. Nobody can take money away from me. Hippopotamus is out. I'll be up on a hill. Now you wait for Duke's signal, and then you get this sign off the road. Now I figure at first the driver's gonna sit tight. So you let the other guy get all the way around in front before you blow your nose. And he's no good to us dead. Just keep him from getting back in. Cause we ain't gonna get his partner out. He is. about that time. Mm. Here comes the stagecoach, old buddy. Go in.
You saved me a seat. Right up front. Keep down. Get out and see how bad we're stuck. Don't move! You in there, come out! I said come out or I'll cut your boyfriend down! Don't move! Halt! Scout is brave. Don't be frightened. Run! Stay here. Did you get him? Nah, they're still wide awake and wiggling. Did you use the armor-piercing stuff? Yeah, big deal. They ducked under the window. I had a guess where they were. Well? I guess wrong. What do I do now, boss lady? You know, sometimes I could kill him. Well, if we don't get out of here pretty soon, somebody else might. Your little boyfriends are right now phoning for the sheriff. Oh, we got time. We got about ten minutes to talk those guards out of there. I hope you're good at debating. Get Guy over here. Guy, come on over here. What do you want me to do? Fly over that armored car? You'll have the wings to do it with the harp thrown in if you don't hurry up. Give me a 45. How much time we got? I don't know, maybe seven, eight minutes. Uh, I vote we scram. I vote you shut up. Now, those gas tanks are locked. But we're going to get a little gas, and we're going to light a nice, sweet fuse. Here. You take that and crawl into the back end and put a slug in the gas tank. Oh, I got news for you. What do you think's gonna happen when I put a slug in that gas tank? Even money says nothing. Well, I'm gonna need better odds than that, I can tell you. There's a 50-50 chance that tank will blow. 50-50 for a hundred grand, huh? Well, you can't take it with you. Duke? <laughs> I'm chicken. Well, I'm not. Now, you keep those guys busy. Now, if she goes up, you can give my share to the old lady's home. And you two can move in. Okay, hold it! Just in case, better put your fingers in your ears. What's the idea? I don't know. Just give me a shirt, will you? Throw a few their way. Put plenty on it now. You got a match? Yeah. Okay, go. Bonnie, them deputies are going to be here in a second. All right. You just get down the road and you say hello.
Okay. You got about one minute to come out of there. You're coming out. Take your choice. Through the door or through the roof. You got about 30 seconds. Don't shoot. We're coming out. Hurry up. Kick those rags out of the way. Make it snappy. Get the car. you were aiming at. Oh, why would I want to kill Duke? You want to be the big man again. You're a punk. You could stand on your head and you'd still be a punk. You, Duke, all of you. Where are we going? In Louisiana. What? In the middle of the night? By the time we get there, it'll be morning. Well, what's the big hurry? The big hurry is I want some action. And I want it right now. We're gonna hit the bank in Athens. Athens, Louisiana, June 5th, 1934. How do you know? guy called my boys, Mr. Steele. And? He said that he and Bonnie was going to hit the Athens Bank once my boys to come along. When? Mr. Steele, I I'm taking my life in my hands coming out here. Now like you listen this. to me. Your boys did two years in the reform school on account of Guy. You let them hook up with him again, they'll wind up in the death house. I, I want to know when they're going to hit that bank. I don't know for sure. They're coming out to my place tomorrow, Guy and Bonnie. What for? Pick up my boys. Any idea where they're coming from? Boys give them directions. Tomorrow morning, they'll be coming down the Lisbon-Athens Road. Thirteen hits off red roughing in the seven innings he lasted. It was a bad day for pitchers. What'd you do that for? <laughs> Since when are you a baseball fan? You don't have to be a baseball fan to listen to him. He's talking about baseball. I liked his voice. It was real nice. Sounded like a real sweet guy. <laughs> How'd you know what a real sweet guy sounds like? I wouldn't know from anything you ever taught me, Guy. June 6, 1934. You gonna know him for sure? Don't worry about that. I don't know him. What time do you figure, poor Tom? I don't know. What makes you so sure he's gonna come along here at all? Little bird told me. 
You all think that little old bird knows what he's talking about? We'll soon find out. I hope you can trust those two boys to keep their mouths shut. Very well. They ain't in the mood to go back to jail. I don't like the idea of two guys I never worked with. I told you, Bonnie, I know them. You won't be any good, that's for sure. Bonnie, the job calls for four hands. Now, you can take it or leave it. Either you're going to pick them boys up, or you can do it all on your own. All right, all right. We're looking for trouble with two new guys. Bonnie, and don't tell me you lost your nerve. I didn't lose it, Guy. I know right where I left it. Well, we gotta get some gas. I'm gonna stop up here. It's not them. Their car's got 34 Arkansas plates. It's not them. Hold your fire! This just might be them. Not yet. It's them. Bonnie's driving. Arkansas plates. It's them. Boys, they're a mighty tricky pair. No matter how dead they look, don't stop firing until I tell you. Stop! It's a trap! say something as we came up. I guess she was calling for Guy. Uh, too late now. We got ourselves a one-way ticket. There's nothing you can do once you get on, but ride right to the end of the line. 